Some schools are just daycare centers. Charging that some schools are only playing the role of daycare centers, Prime Minister Andrew Ness has mandated a 14-member education transformation commission to conduct a comprehensive review of the public school education system. Now, Mr. Prime Minister, the reason why some schools are merely daycare centers is because parents take school as merely daycare centers. I can tell you this right now. Parents across the island are itching for the reopening of school and for the wrong reasons in this COVID-19 period. They are itching for the reopening of school, not because their child or children are sitting at home, not doing anything productive, but for merely one reason, because school is a place where they can leave their children while they go about their business. So this is why schools have become merely daycare centers, because parents who leave their children are parents who take school for daycare centers are the ones who send their children to school ill-equipped. No textbook, sometimes no lunch money, because they see school as just a way of getting rid of the children or child for five to six hours on a daily basis, because they don't want them around. Because a good 90% of Jamaican children are unplanned children. Unplanned children are usually unwanted children. So parents take schools as daycare centers. Now, I'm going to look at some of the issues plaguing our education system. For years, we have been doing reviews upon reviews of the education system. And the findings have consistently pointed out several issues which administration upon administration either ignore or just refuse to fix. So facing our education system is underfunding or lack of financial assistance. Our education system has been underfunded for years from independence until today our education system is underfunded. Now look at this. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that a house that is built on a good foundation will last. Now I say that to say this. The early childhood education system in Jamaica has been neglected for years. Now how do you expect an education system to be functioning properly if the foundation is not set properly? The early childhood education system is the foundation and for years the government have paid scant regards to the early childhood education system. First of all, the early childhood education system is where anybody in the community, that is the culture, or was the culture, it is slowly changing. Anybody in a community with a high school level of education who just gather some children in a, in a church building and they have a basic school operating. For years that have been happening, without government proper intervention, lack of trained teachers, lack of trained personnel. It's only in recent years the government has put some effort into transforming the, the, the early childhood education sector. And still, enough is not being done. So therefore, if the foundation of the education system is shaky, then you can see the end results. So, firstly, the early childhood education system is grossly underfunded, as well as all other sectors of the education system. And this is not nothing new. This is not nothing new. Underfunding or lack of funding creates problems such as overcrowded classrooms, lack of resources. Recently, teachers were in Jamaica were still using chalk and chalkboards. When when, when countries around the world are using smart boards and white boards. So our education system is grossly underfunded. You have some schools, you have overcrowded classrooms because the government is not willing to pay the amount of teachers so we can have the correct teacher to pupil ratio. You have schools that are multi-grade schools. 
multi-grade meaning one teacher teaches two or more class. The reason for this, the government is not willing to pay the teachers because our multi-grade system starts or our multi-grade system operates is where it usually happens in the rural areas where the population of the school is not large. So you might have five children in grade one, five children in grade two, and five children in grade three. So that's 15. So guess what? Instead of having three teachers for those three different classes, they just put all three classes in one and one teacher teaches your three classes. Now you tell me if that is not madness. So for years, they have been cutting corners as it relates to funding the education system. And the only reason why teachers in Jamaica has been able to reach to reap some amount of success is because of the innovativeness of Jamaican teachers. That is why they are wanted worldwide. They are renowned worldwide because teachers in Jamaica are great innovators due to the circumstances in which they are placed to operate. Another issue, apart from being underfunded, another issue facing the education system in Jamaica is lack of parental involvement. Parental involvement plays a critical role in a child's development academically. It's not just turning up to parents teachers meeting. Parental involvement is vastly lacking in Jamaica education system because parents are of the notion that once they send their children to school they have done their part. That's it. I send him to school every day or I send her to school every day, I have done my part. So I can tell you, children who tend to do well academically is because 90% of the students who do well academically is because they have good parental support. It's no rocket science. So lack of parental involvement is another issue that plagues our education system. Another problem that is plaguing our education system is, is a breakdown of discipline. And the breakdown of discipline is coming from our society, where it stems from the breakdown of the family structure. And the breakdown of the family structure is also linked to crime in our country. The breakdown of the family structure, you see, is one of the biggest problems as well facing Jamaica as a nation. The schools in Jamaica are the last beacon of hope for Jamaica in terms of discipline, organization, and grooming of our young men and women. The breakdown of discipline has seeped into the schools where teachers have to be spending as much as 40% of the teaching and learning time to correct in discipline. So there must be significant loss in teaching and learning time. If teachers have to be correcting in discipline, then teaching and learning time will be lost. With this educational transformation team put in place, I am sure the findings are going to be the same. An underfunded education system being the main one, overcrowded classroom, lack of parental involvement, and a breakdown of overall discipline in our schools. Those will be some of the issues that will be in this new commission report. They have the, the NEHI is another body that inspects schools. And every year in the NEI report, the areas that is lacking is leadership and management. When the NEI goes into schools, and they do a comprehensive review of the operation of that school. They normally have certain categories that them grade or mark the schools on. Mainly teaching and learning and leadership and management. Those are the two major areas. And 90% of the time, teaching and learning get a pass, passing grade or a satisfactory grade. Where the schools normally fail is leadership and management and it is the same problem facing our country today leadership and management the government implemented the nsc curriculum in 2016 2017 academic year and i believe that the government thought that this nsc curriculum would be a silver bullet 
to the problems facing our education system as it relates to academic performance. I know if you interview any of them, they will tell you no, they did not expect um, drastic improvement overnight. But being short-sighted as they are, they were believing or they were of the notion that this would have been a silver bullet because what they did was to copy some first world practices and compile them and created an NSC curriculum. So being that they copied from some first world countries, they were saying to themselves, ah, this is going to be the solution. And now, four years down the road, they are not seeing any tangible results or any significant results. They are no bitter and they are no pointing fingers. But all the problems plaguing the education system can be pointed back to government. They know the problems, but they refuse to fix them. Just like they know the problem of crime in our country, but they refuse to fix the problem. What they like to do is put band-aid over the problem. That is how they operate. Just like in Jamaica, year up and year we're talking about drought. And Jamaica have, and Jamaica have about 20 hard rivers. Right now as we speak, water is running out into the sea. Wasting. Well, not wasting, but water is running out into the sea. And yet we're talking about drought, water lock-offs, restrictions. Countries that are desert, built on desert, have water 365 days of the year. Our country like Jamaica, the land of food and water, every two months you're talking about water restrictions and drought. If the rain doesn't fall for, for, for two months, we're talking about drought conditions, water restrictions. And we have so many rivers here because, again, they're not willing to fix the problem. I hear the minister this evening talking on, on television about um, chucking water and all of that to different places facing drought. That is how corrupt they are because all of these contracts they are giving out to chuck water, those people are politically aligned. So that is why they don't want to fix the problem permanently because they are making a living from some of these problems facing the country. Similar with road. Every time they pay contractor to patch the road, they patch it with mall. Mall cannot patch the road. As soon as water gets under the asphalt and seep into the mall, the mall becomes almost like putty. And the surface of the road just erode. And years they have been using mall to fix the road. And they know that mall cannot use to fix the road properly. But why they persist in using mall to fix the road? Because they usually give the contract to their friends who are politically aligned. And they know that the road won't last for two years. So every two years, their friend gets to eat her food. And so that is why they don't want to fix the roads properly. Because some of these contractors will be out of work for a good while.